friends, thank you for watching my channel. I just want to remind you if you need wallpaper, go to www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Tell them Spencer sent you. In fact, if you use my hashtag, Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, they'll be sure to give you a 10% off at your checkout. No matter how much you order, they have a wide selection of wallpaper. Check it out. Hey, this is Spencer Colgan from Spencer Colgan is Wallpaper, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm hanging um, 30 ounce commercial vinyl. It's 52 inches wide, and I wanted to talk about doing a double cut. I have many videos online about doing a double cut, and um, a lot of veterans watch my channel, and you know, they love their job and they check out things online and they'll either say, hey, I like the way you do that. I've been doing this for years, but you taught me a new trick. And on the contrary, others will say, no, 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 that takes too much time. So I wanted to address that because I work uh, usually by myself. I've got my own business and I work with some veterans who do commercial vinyl exclusively. And I watch the, you know, you're always learning new tricks from watching other people do it. So I wanna show you something that I'm employing today, which is helping me um, keep a straight cut. My last commercial project, the vinyl was thinner. Consequently, it weighed less. And thirdly, the texture on the last job was very mild. This that I'm going to show you is very thick. The texture is so strong that it will make your blade go off the beat and path, so to speak, and, and make your cut a disaster. So let me share with you, you know, they say there's uh, many ways to skin a cat. So now the veterans who do this, this type of wallpaper day in and day out for the last 20 and 30 years, they'll say, no way, get lost, that'll take too long. But I want to show you how you can successfully do it. So, because my channel is for do-it-yourselfers and professionals as well. I'll see you on the next frame. This product I'm about to show you is a J. Josephson commercial vinyl. Let me show you. This is the vinyl we're speaking about on this video. And this is the product. J. Josephson. So, in commercial wallpaper, these products are hung quickly and the techniques employed are designed to make the installation quick, quick, quick. But I can tell you if you're a new installer, and you've just begun hanging commercial goods, you'll see that some commercial goods are really easy to hang and others offer more of a challenge. Look at the thickness of this wallpaper. It's not only thick, but it's stubborn. It's very, it's hard material. This is a doctor's office. This stuff is meant to last, okay? And so, number one, you wanna hang it plumb. Plumb, it's very heavy. So when I sliced it at the top, uh, and I had to reposition it, because I was just shy up there. I had to reposition it, it's a lot of muscle work. And you don't want any overlapping at the top. So th ideally, the top sheet should be cut straight. This way you're not cutting an overlap and you're slicing it against the ceiling, getting paste on the ceiling. And that, if you cut it straight before you apply it to the wall, you can just put it up against the straight ceiling. <clears throat> that will help you, for the most part, getting it plumb here and here. So this was my first sheet. And this is my second sheet. So I came to the first sheet and against the, against 
the edge of the second sheet, because I'm a lefty, I need to see the, my cutting action going on to the left of my person. If you're a righty, you're gonna do it the opposite, okay? So I took a piece of two inch tape and I put it on the edge of my second sheet that is overlapped over the first. Because I know if this is straight, the end of this sheet is straight. And if this edge is straight on my second sheet, then I know that my two inch piece of tape will be straight. And so when I cut it against this edge, I know that my cut is going to be straight. Here's what I mean. When I take a straight edge and put it up against the edge of the tape and angle it out at a 45 degree, because if I do it like this, my blade will get dull and start to cut against this and make a sloppy cut. So I put it up against the tape and then I angle that at a 45. Now my blade can only do one thing and that is to stay straight. If you're driving against the curb, right? Your, your tire will tend to stay right against the curb. It won't jump up onto the street or the sidewalk, I should say. I mean, it could. But you know what I mean, the tire is gonna ride against the curb. And that's what I'm talking about here. Now this might take you longer, but let me tell you something. I have gone all around the USA with the exception of five states. I go into a lot of commercial stores and I see all of the wallpaper work. And I can tell you that almost every time I see quick jobs, and this is how people cut the wallpaper. No tape, just a guess at plum. They trim it at the top, they trim it at the bottom. And here's what they have. Here's one sheet of wallpaper. And here's the other. By the time they get to the bottom, they realize their wallpaper is not straight and they start, their line is cut curved. It's curved. If you look at my Instagram channel, I recently featured a commercial establishment in Texas and one in California, uh, fast food places. And I saw that this is what people are doing. This is what they do. Watch this. They're using their hand. When they, when they get to the bottom, the body changes. You're kneeling down like a catcher. And this is what happens. You tend to start doing that. And I follow the curve. Here's why. As the air has dirt in it, you look at your air conditioner filters, it's all dirt. What does that mean? Dirt's in the air. Well, that dirt gets on the wallpaper. The wallpaper gets cleaned. Where does the dirt go? It gets trapped in the, in the seam. After time, you will see the cut goes like this because it doesn't stay clean. So if you want that, you, you can cut it like that. But if you want to do it better, now I mentioned this procedure here because the wallpaper is thick. I keep saying paper because I hang wallpaper and I hang vinyl. This vinyl is thick. It has its own grooves. If you should try to go too quick and your blade gets a little dull, guess what's gonna happen? Your blade is gonna jump into one of these tracks and it's gonna go in the direction of going off of the straight path, okay? This will help you. Now, I'm using a nine millimeter blade. Pros who've been doing this a long time can say, get lost. This guy doesn't know what he's doing, blah, blah, blah. I've heard it. I just deal with it. I do know what I'm doing. They use a single edge blade. But let me tell you something about Spencer's hand. The vets who've been doing this for years, 
I don't know where they get the strength to hold a blade, to hold a straight edge, a single edge, you know what I mean, and go like this with their hand. I can't get a grip on the thing. You need to come out with a tool, and I have one, but I, I, don't, like, I don't like it. It's too big, I, I have it in, in my truck. It holds the, the uh, single edge, but it's just too big for the blade. I need something smaller. Make a single edge like this that puts it in, or give, give me a breakaway like that. So I commend the men who can do it like this. <laughs> I, first of all, you can really slice your fingers open. Once you get a cut on wallpaper work, it's three days before you can really say you're ready to work again because you cut these fingers, dipping it in water, you can get an infection. Not cool. So here we go, that's how I cut it. And now let me take it off, okay? Let's take the tape off. Now the idea, remember, is staying plumb, nice and straight. Okay, it's a clean cut. Yes, you're spending money on tape, and normally I don't use the tape, but this stuff, again, remember, is thick. A lot of mistakes you can incur, okay? Now we're gonna open up the seam. You open up the seam, and you'll find that your underlap is ready to come out. Okay. Now, all I really have to do here and you don't want to get paste on it, so you want to keep your dirty fingers off of this. Let's show you how I really do this. Okay, so with a microfiber cloth, and folks, I do mean not just any cloth, this is a miracle rag. One of the uh, veterans who uh, works for me says, when these came out, it changed the game. You'll notice that I have a curved smoother. Sometimes your smoother can scrape the surface of the vinyl. I see guys using this. Let me tell you something. I don't like using this thing. This is a taping knife, but I have it just in case I need it. I see a lot of vets use it. I'm gonna go with this. I, I curved it with heat and I pressed it against the ground and I came up with a nice, something that's not going to scratch the surface, okay? You ain't scratching this, but I use it for different wallpapers and wall coverings. So now with a microfiber, slice it a bit. I'm taking longer to show you. This is not, we do this quickly. So again, I'm sure some veterans are saying, yeah, everything is time and money, et cetera, et cetera. I hear you, brother. I got you. And then we just go like this, look. All the way to the bottom. And then, I got a little piece of tape at the bottom. Here's what I want to share with you. When I first started this, let's analyze this a bit, huh? You see those grooves? Guess what they retain? Whoops. They retain water. Let me show you. What's this? I can see the beads of water in there. And maybe you can see somewhat of a discoloration. Well, here's what happens. You wipe it down, you think your job is done. You go to get paid, two, three days later, the guy says, hey, it's all cloudy around the seams. What happens is you didn't use clean water or you use clean water 
and you left a residue on the seams and the water made it transparent. You didn't see the issue. You assumed they were water marks. When in fact, it's paste, it's dried paste. Now you gotta come in. Here's what I suggest if that happens to you. Get yourself a scrub brush on a pole and put it on the pole, dip it in warm water and just scrub the area, you know, so that you can get into these grooves. Listen to them. Those grooves trap water and paste. So if you happen to get water and paste stuck in those things, you may see the manifestations of that error when it's dry and it'll look like, um, you know dripping wax when it becomes uh, like on something, but it didn't drip like globs of it, it just thin, you scrape it off a glass, that's what it'll look like on your wall covering, okay? So hopefully uh, we learned something. Now, let me just put that away and then I'll, I'll show you this in speed, speed motion. You can see the area of the seam because you can see the dark area where the water lies. But that's my, that's my seam. Look at how perfect. Look at that. Okay. If you're new at hanging wall covering, you know, you got two, three years, that's kind of new. And you interchange between paper and vinyl you'll change your technique as you hang different products. The point of showing you this right now is to show you that you cannot see the seam. You can't see it. I cut it straight. I'm not crisscrossing over these grooves. If you do one of these, you're gonna see it. <clears throat> so you wanna respect the vinyl. Like I said, it's hard material. You mess up and you kind of go off the, off the beaten path, you're going to pay for it. All right, so please, I offer you these suggestions so you do a good job. By the way, I share with you my mistakes too. I have the benefit of having done this for many years and I share with you those things that I ask you not to do because Spencer has done them. We come to a point in the wall where we only need Twelve and a half inches. Okay, we want to have an overlap. You want at least an inch. But the higher the wall, I suggest you go a little more than an inch because things happen when you get midway and then all the way down. You might find yourself, if you're not careful, going completely off right into the, um, the selvage, which is here. Okay, so Again, we're going to need a piece that accommodates this one part of the wall. So we're looking at 12 and a half. Okay, so why, why am I measuring that? You don't want to take commercial vinyl and hang this at once. <laughs> That's a good way to go crazy. Trim this piece first, take it off of the roll, and then handle that. We want to cut this piece, overlap it here, bring it to this corner, and then bring it out an eighth of an inch onto this wall because we're going to need to hide the seam. The seam is challenged by, follow me here now, a corner that is not 90 degrees. If you look closely, you can see curvature. Can you see it? Just follow it up. Can you see all of that? It's not straight. Okay, so you want to yield to imperfections in the wall. And so you want to cut this first, overlap it into here so that your next sheet goes on top of that. And so that you don't see that your wallpaper is overlapped onto another. You just only make it an eighth of an inch uh, beyond that corner. So to trim your piece of wallpaper, 
you could use a chop saw with a blade that's not going to tear up vinyl. Or you can simply, in your work area, you use this metal guide and you take your, your blade and you trim against it. Okay, this way you don't have a factory edge, but you have a nice straight edge nonetheless. Okay. Okay, let's put our level on this to make sure we're plumb. Okay, let's make an adjustment. Okay, my wallpaper is installed. I have a piece coming onto the next wall. I want to trim it. I don't want too much there, you know why? You're going to see it, you know, telegraphing through. I just have a little bit onto this wall. And so that's not going to be noticeable. Now, we're going to take vinyl over vinyl paste and put it against this corner, but bring it right up on, onto the vinyl. Okay, if you want to make vinyl stick to vinyl, you're going to have to use a special paste. It's called vinyl over vinyl. Just right up to that edge. Okay. Now when you're hanging your next sheet here, you want to make sure that you have a plumb line against which to hang the edge. So you'll be hanging it from the edge toward the corner, so that your corner, which is not straight, does not dictate where the edge falls. Because if your corner is crooked, your edge will be crooked. But if your edge is straight, plumb, then you can trim what is not straight, caused by the corner, in the corner and you will create the illusion of perfection and perfect squareness. Now, I've tri trimmed the cell edge off of this, this edge, and this is going to be my corner, my corner side, okay? I'm just pushing it in manually, okay? I want it to be perfectly in the corner without any turn on the corner. You don't want it turning, you want it just sitting in the corner to achieve the effect that it is perfection. Watch, 
That's not in enough. You see how my overlap is? Now you can see it, right? So we cover that. We cover it and we can feel that the VOV paste is causing it to bond just beautifully. Okay? I'm gonna get that in there by hand. If you use a smoother and it gets stuck in that corner, gets hung up, you'll crease it. So, quickly get it in there. That white right there is not the edge showing. It's just the light showing as if it's white. Okay, let's go get that in there. Nice. Okay. Corner's real wavy, folks. All right, now, what I want to do is get all these wrinkles out. So I'm going to move it all this way. 